This is the first in our three programs that take a look at spectroscopy techniques. And the first one we'll look at is mass spectroscopy, then infrared, and finally, magnetic nuclear resonance. This is the first in our three programs that will take a look at different spectra. In the first program, we'll look at mass spectroscopy, the second one, infrared, and the last one, nuclear magnetic resonance. Let's take a look a little bit at how this technique works by this sketch over here at the side. I'm going to begin with my gas containing ethanol. Ethanol has the formula C2H5OH. And I'm injecting a, it in the gas form. That gas flow that comes up in here is then subject to some sort of ionizing radiation. It could be x-rays or something. And the purpose of that radiation when it comes in is to zap the molecule and potentially knock off an electron, leaving behind a positively charged species. That's what we call our ion source. Our ion sources tend to be positively charged. That ion that's now positively charged makes its way up towards a magnetic field. If that magnetic field wasn't there, the particle would just continue on in its straight course in this direction. However, the presence of the magnetic field causes it to bend off course or deflect. I'll use D to represent that. The amount of deflection depends on a couple of things. One is the smaller the mass, so if we make the mass go down, it's easier to deflect, so our amount of deflection goes up. I can see that here with evidence of my first two sets of numbers. The molar mass of this species is 46. If I make it lighter, by perhaps knocking off a hydrogen, then it will deflect more and curve more off its path to follow the course shown here by 45. Another thing that affects the amount of deflection is charge. If I make the charge go up, perhaps by knocking off two electrons when I do that, that will cause the amount of deflection to go up. So here, my original species, 46, I've knocked off two electrons. It now curves more off path, this mass here being 46, the original mass divided by the two charge that it now possesses, and it causes it to curve more off. The data is then collected from here and recorded in this graph that we see down here. So we would see sort of peaks or lines indicating how often that fragment appears in a particular detector. So here I'm showing three lines for the three species I have shown here. And the most common species has the largest line. Let's look at the actual spectrum of ethanol. Here I have, um, from a data source, the actual spectrum that's created by ethanol. And the first peak I'd like to address is the one that's furthest over to the right-hand side. This is sometimes called the parent peak. Now, this peak results when the entire molecule goes through without fragmenting. So I'm getting the entire molecule. So this one is due to C5, C2H5OH with a positive charge. That generates this peak furthest to the right, the entire molecule. The one that's right beside it happens perhaps because the molecule fragmented right there. As a result, this remaining fragment has a relative mass of 45 and the hydrogen just one. So this then possessed a positive charge causing this peak. So I'll write it here as CH3, CH2O. So that was causing that peak. There are other places it could break. Perhaps if it broke, if the substance broke here, we would have 15 on this side and 29 on this side. That gives these two peaks, uh, sorry, 31 on this side. And that gives these two peaks. So this one would be due to the CH2OH fragment and this little peak down here at 15 due to CH3. Finally, I could get it breaking at this location, and that fragment weighs 17 
and this one 29. So that explains the origin of that peak there due to C2H5. So again, just to recap, the peak furthest to the right, the parent peak, gives me the molar mass of the entire species, whereas the smaller peaks give me the molar masses of fragments of that. Let's look at the difference with the substance ethanol versus ethanol. I have here the structure of ethanol, an aldehyde indicated by the doubly bonded oxygen at the end of the chain. This has a molar mass of 44. So right here, that's due to our entire species making it through without fragmenting. The loss, perhaps, of that hydrogen can lead to the next peak that remains here. So this would be due to CH3CO. Perhaps our species breaks right there, and that would give a 15 and this a 29. So the major peak that I see here would be due to the CHO fragment, and again this small peak down here due to CH3. So um, this particular technique, very useful at obtaining the molar mass of a substance by looking at the parent peak, but it's also useful for identifying various structures that could be present within that molecule. In our next program, we'll take a look at infrared spectroscopy. Thanks for watching.